In a previous video, I showed how to make the small spark gap Tesla coil out of recycled parts and materials in less than two hours. In this video, I'm going to show you how to hook it up to a homemade 15,000 volt power supply and with a few modifications, make it much more impressive. The first thing you're going to need for this project is the Tesla coil itself. I built this Tesla coil from a previous video. As I said earlier, it only took me about two hours to make and was made out of entirely recycled materials. These two wires here were connected to the meshes of the electric fly swatter racket, which I used as my power supply. These wires will now go to the power supply terminals and to the capacitors. Because of how the electric fly swatter racket circuit worked, I didn't need to use any capacitors when I was using it to power my Tesla coil. However, because I'm now using a high voltage power supply, I now need capacitors. Instead of buying capacitors or doing complicated equations and calculations to work out how many I'd need or what value they'd need to be, I decided to just make a few salt water capacitors and join them together or take them away, depending on how the Tesla coil worked. This worked really well because it doesn't matter if they blow up or they break, I can always make another one and I can add them or take them away depending on how it works. This salt water capacitor is made of water that's filled up to about the neck on this bottle. It's then mixed with a teaspoon of salt. I have a wire attached to a paper clip going inside which has got a piece of duct tape on the top so that it doesn't come out. I then have another wire taped to the side. So basically there's one wire going into the water and one taped to the side. The capacitors store the electricity and release it very quickly, or slowly, depending on how many capacitors there are. To have a higher value for the capacitancy, I simply make another one of these, or more and more, or less and less, and join the inside wires together and the outside wires together, and I have a higher or lower value capacitor. For my Tesla coil, I needed three saltwater capacitors. I joined all the outside wires of the capacitors together, and all the inside wires together. The point where these three join is where the terminals are going to be of the capacitors. The last thing you're going to need is a high voltage power supply. My high voltage power supply uses a high voltage flyback transformer that I got out of a television that a friend kindly gave to me. It's powered by this 12 volt battery, however a 9 volt battery also works. Inside I have the components running the transformer and the transformer itself. To make sure I don't get shocked, I've wrapped all the components in duct tape and I've got a switch on the side. All the components are, are a power transistor and a few resistors. To stop the power transistor from melting through the box as it did there, I've ripped a heat sink out of the television set and duct taped the transistor to it. Out the front here I have the two wires with the high voltage. These two wires can produce arcs of nearly two centimeters long which means the power supply is producing nearly 20,000 volts. So that's a lot, and uh, I really don't want to touch that. The flyback transformer was brought out of the television set, but to get that out, I had to go through a few steps to short out the television set into the ground so I didn't get a lethal electric shock. I suggest you watch the video in the link in the description box below so that you can see how to get it out of the television set without getting shocked and to make the television set perfectly safe. I've now turned off the lights so you can see a demonstration of the power supply going. You don't just have to use the power supply for Tesla coils. There's heaps of other interesting projects you can use them for as well. It's important to, when you've turned the Tesla coil power supply off, touch the two wires together so that you can see a spark. This shorts the power supply out so that you don't get a shock. When you've finished making all these components, all you have to do is join them all together following this circuit diagram. First of all, take one of the alligator clip wires from the Tesla coil and attach it to one end of the capacitor bank. Then take the other wire and attach it to the other end. 
Then take one of the wires from the high voltage power supply and hook it up to one of the alligator clips. Then take the other wire and do the same. It should look like this. Then separate the components as far away from each other as possible to prevent arcing. Then separate one of the circuit blocks holding one of the nails of the spark gap and separate it slightly, leaving about a 3mm gap. But now all that's left to do is start it up. I'm now going to turn the switch on and we should hear it go. To adjust how quickly the spark gap in, I can adjust, carefully adjust the um, spark gap. Be careful not to touch the capacitors as that will give you a very nasty shock. To see sparks come up the top, I can use the ground wire and hold it next to the top load. Because it's producing such high voltage, the battery power will be quickly used. So that's why the Tesla coil will not work so well after a while. I've switched the power supply off using the switch, but it's also important to tap the two wires together where the spark gap is. This is very important because it shorts out the power so you don't get a shock. It's now, when you've done that, perfectly safe to touch, rearrange and move around. So that's how to make a high voltage Tesla coil out of a few bottles, a tennis ball, some old transformer wire, an old television, and a few other scrap parts from around the house in just a couple hours. But because I'm now using an electric, a high voltage, <laughs>